This video is brought to you by Remarkable, the next generation paper tablet. <sighs> the struggle is real. All right, a patient with GI cancer is found to have lung metastasis. There are no liver metastases. Based on your knowledge of the venous drainage, the venous drainage corresponds to the lymphatic drainage of the bowel segments. Where is the primary cancer? The ileum, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, sigmoid colon, or rectum. 66% going with the rectum, so they were listening to Dr. Payne. Uh, so, so an individual, it goes back. What's up, YouTube? Uh, man, I've missed you guys. It has been a minute since I've been able to put out a video like this. Um, but I have been super busy from marriage to fatherhood to medical school to doing a business. So we have been um, putting on a lot of hats, juggling a lot of things all at once. But it's okay. Today is going to actually be more of the same. And I wanted to bring you guys along for today to kind of show you guys what all of that looks like to me. Um, I started this morning off waking up pretty early around 5, 5.30 to do a lot of my studying. I found that eating the frog early or doing the thing that uh, you least want to do as soon as you can uh, makes the rest of the day a little better, especially when you have so many other things on your plate. So for me, that is studying. So I did um, a bit of studying from like 5.30 to 8 before class. And then I had class, which I attended virtually, and this is actually my final block of my preclinical time as a medical student. So after GI, I'll never like have just lecture based school ever. So <laughs> that is super exciting. One more block left. It's GI. I'm enjoying it so far. And then we have small group for this almost every day after our lectures where we work with students and a preceptor to go over cases. The rest of the day for me will consist of finishing these Anki cards. I am working in the pediatric outpatient clinic from one to five and I'll be working on a course that I'm putting together for pre-medical students applying to medical school. And you're probably wondering, how do I keep track of all of this? How can I stay organized and focused when I'm working on so many different projects? And that brings me to the kind sponsor of today's video, Remarkable, and this bad boy, the Remarkable 2 tablet. Remarkable is an innovative paper tablet that combines all the benefits of handwritten notes on a digital device. If I need to think about a concept I'm learning in school, I can easily pull out my Remarkable 2 tablet and create any image, concept map, or a list of differentials that I may need. I can also download and annotate lecture slides directly onto this device, which makes studying that much easier. And when I'm brainstorming ideas for Evolving Medic, the Remarkable 2 tablet allows me to easily jot down whatever comes to mind and keep all of these ideas organized electronically. And one of the best features is that all of my notes are organized and accessible on all of my devices so I always have access to everything. This tool has become a household favorite with my wife Madison also using built-in templates to create things like checklists that help her stay focused as well. In a day and age where social media dominates our devices and we're constantly being bombarded with notifications, being able to pull out the remarkable tablet and actually separate from all of the noise makes it so much easier to do focused work. And when you have to balance a lot of things like family, school, and a personal business, Using a tool like Remarkable is key to be able to stay organized, maintain productivity, and do your best thinking. I really do love this tool and what it's done for my productivity. And if you guys are interested in upping your own productivity, make sure you check out their website, which I've linked in the description below. Now I'm gonna go and get some food for the first time of the day. Try to recharge my batteries because we have a lot to do. And I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Say what's up, Kari. What's up, people? <laughs> you see, I'm dressed up now. Um, I'm getting ready to go off to peds. Most people ask me why I'm always wearing suits. Um, <laughs> at Mayo, we actually don't have white coats for the most part. So when we see patients, we dress up and we wear suits. Um, and I'm hoping that Kari's not going to spit up on this one. So you want to spit up? We'll see. <laughs> But honestly, this right here is the motivation that I need to get through the day to really make the day feel great, stay motivated. Um, and it's cool. I get to have my own baby and then I'm going to see babies. So, see y'all there.
back in the car. It is about 5 p.m. Done with peds, done with the clinic for the day. It was an awesome day. Um, we had about five patients, everything from like a four month old to a 22 year old, you know, in peds. But I guess, you know, some patients, if they're in college and stuff, they can still go and see their pediatrician. Um, but one thing that I thought was really interesting I wanted to share with you guys um, and really meaningful is my pediatrician was telling me a story about a patient she, re she recently had. And essentially the patient had wishes that were different than what the patient's parents had for their health. And she talked about being able to navigate that and understanding that her primary focus is to take care of her patients and in cases where you have like a teenager who wants something different than their parents and you have to be an adult saying that I am going to fulfill the wishes of a teenager like that's <laughs> that's tough um but it just highlighted the fact that one you know the needs of your patient are what's most important and two being a doctor isn't just like treating illness and finding what the diagnosis is and figuring out what the best treatment is. There's this whole other aspect of healthcare that involves managing people outside of just managing their health. And I think that oftentimes goes underlooked, but you know, if you truly care about people and you truly care about like loving on people, you know, healthcare is awesome because you get to do that through their health, but you also get to do do that through all these other ways um like managing conflict with parents and showing support to somebody your patient when they may not be getting that from parents and you know it's just a really cool kind of opportunity to to just care on people outside of their health So a lot of people usually reach out and ask me how like med school with a newborn has been going. Um, and I wanted to ask Madison first, and then I just wanted to have a little conversation about how that is going. So that you guys can see, if you guys want kids in med school, what it really looks like. <laughs> I'm tired. I guess that's what it really looks like. <laughs> but Madison, what do you think? How has, how has it been for you? as a wife with a child and a husband in med school? It's different, obviously, because um, our priorities have shifted a little bit more. Um, Kari does not like leave my side ever, and if he does, you're holding him. Mm -hmm. um, How's sleep been? What's, what is sleep? <laughs> the first couple of weeks, we Kari was hardly sleeping, so I was hardly sleeping. And JR was then hardly sleeping, so we've had to move around some things in our schedule and life and house for it to work, but we have a, a rhythm now, we have a routine, and mm. Kari has a pacifier now, so <laughs> he can sleep. <laughs> I think I think you brought up a good point of, like, you find a rhythm. This is like anything else where, like, if you introduce something different into mm. the equation, like, it takes time to kind of figure out what works and what the new way normal. of life will be yeah what the new normal is once you find the new normal mm -hmm. everything else can kind of fall in place and so yeah. like the transition of having a kid in medical school is going to be tough just as like the transition of starting medical school or the transition of starting clerkships or whatever new happens in medical school is going to be tough yeah but you find your rhythm with it and you figure out what works and it's one of those things where it's like I might be a little more tired, but I am like so inspired by this little guy that like even if I'm physically tired, I'm like emotionally energized. Yeah. And like I'm really driven to do a lot. And yeah. he's just like the joy of the world. And it's just like mm -hmm. I don't think about being tired just because I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. 
All right, guys. We're done with school. We're done with the clinic stuff. Still hanging out with the family, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to do a little more planning on my Evolve Your Application course. Of course, what I'm using is my Remarkable tablet. Um, but if you aren't aware, if you haven't been, kind of, I guess, following me all over, because this is basically what I've been talking about for the last, like, two weeks. I'm running a course for pre-medical students to get them into medical school. This is the second cohort that I'm running this, and I am super excited. So if you are applying to medical school, make sure that you check out the course. Check out the course website for more information. Last year, some of the students got accepted into places like Stanford and Duke and Mayo and UCLA and the list goes on. It is an amazing opportunity for me to work one-on-one -on -one with you guys. But not only me, there's more than 20 other mentors who are working alongside me to help you guys as uh, aspiring medical students to get into medical school. It's getting harder and harder than ever um, to actually get accepted. And we are putting together a super high yield course where you get to just work with us to get into medical school. So if you're interested in that, check that out. But I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Um, make sure that you go and you check out Remarkable. Again, it's possible to do things like have a family, go to medical school, start a business, um, but you have to find ways to stay organized and ways to stay focused on the individual tasks that you have going on. I hope that this video shows what's possible, even if it's challenging, but again, have some things put in place so that you can actually do it successfully. Um, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm back to making vlogs, guys. Back to making videos. I know it's been a little bit, but you guys can see I've been a bit busy. But of course, until the next one, keep evolving, and I'll see you guys soon. You're tired too. <laughs> we're trying to formulate sentences, but we're so tired that we can't. Sure.